Thank you, Bob. And good morning. I'm honored to join you here today for this important event. Uh, Bobby Harrison asked me earlier, he said, we've been doing this for a long time. That we have because we enjoy getting the word out to folks in the state of Mississippi. Insurance touches every life in the state of Mississippi. It touches every life from the time you're born until the time you die. We don't like insurance because we don't like to pay the premiums, but it's a necessary evil. It's probably the third most costly thing in the family today. A thriving insurance industry is critical for economic growth in our state and for jobs. And you just heard my good friend Andy Gibson talking about agriculture being number one in the state of Mississippi. The number one crop in the state of Mississippi is poultry farms. And guess what? If they can't get insurance, they can't have a farm. It's required by the mortgage unit. If you can't insure a project, you can't finance it. Banks will not loan you money unless you can insure a property. If you have no insurance, you have no poultry farms, you have no chicken to serve, I don't know what Chick-fil-A would do if we close up Mississippi. I guess it'll do something else. Uh, my administration and my team supports a robust insurance market where business can prosper in the state of Mississippi. Successful economic development depends upon a viable insurance industry. Like this country, across the world, we face inflation today, supply chain disruptions, rise in rebuilding costs, especially when you have tornadoes like we had in Rolling Fork and Monroe County after disasters. The Mississippi insurance industry is stable. I'm glad to report that. But it's under great stress and that's with admitted companies, companies that we actually regulate, and not admitted companies, like we call them surplus lines companies that don't regulate the rates on. And they're closing territories, they're consolidating, tightening, underwriting guidelines, refusing to write homeowners that have roots that are over 15 years old. It really presents a lot of opportunity for us to go in and try to straighten the industry out. We're seeing consolidation within the industry. We know one of our local uh, Mississippi homegrown banks, Cadence Bank, has just sold their Cadence Insurance Division to Gallagher for almost a million dollars. Why did they do that? I guess to concentrate on their core business, but the main reason is insurance is extremely complicated. It is a risk business, and it requires great, great study to understand just how to attack those risks and provide affordable, available insurance to people that live in our great state. Now, insurance companies struggle with capital constraints, having money to pay off claims, and profitability issues because of the risk that they suffer, and a string of billion dollar plus catastrophic events that have happened during the last year and over the past several years. We know what happened during Katrina. I sympathize with the people that have to pay these higher rates and who are seeing the increases in economic stress on their families. I understand the burden rate hikes placed on homeowners, and my office works very closely with companies to try to keep low rates lower and to address the systemic issues and profile, profiles that they face in trying to handle risk. Now, the statewide rent pool, which we passed a bill in 2007 to address the issues of recovery on the Great Gulf Coast, were basically about economic recovery, not insurance. It's an insurer of last resort for wind and hail on the Gulf Coast. Unfortunately, their board, which I don't appoint the board, I've, I've got four members out of 11 on that board, asked for a 50% rate increase in commercial business and a 33% rate increase on homeowners on the Gulf Coast. I have denied that rate increase last week. We have to give them some rate increase. We haven't increased rates on the Gulf Coast since 2008. But I cannot, in good conscience, allow the people on the Gulf Coast to suffer a 33% rate increase with what's going on with inflation and companies able to raise their rates and rebuild the costs and increase their premiums. We'll work through this, but I want people to know that they've asked for it and we're not giving it to them. That's a big deal. We've licensed 21 new companies in the state of Mississippi, which is great for this year. And we just, this week, have authorized another company that's coming in that will write property and casualty for homeowners on the Gulf Coast. Now, folks, if you want to lower rates, you've got to have competition. 
And that's what we do at our office. We go out and we solicit companies that are solid, that will bring rates down, provide homeowners with some choices other than just one carrier in the state of Mississippi. In fact, risk taking by new companies actually lowers rates when they can spread the, the number of policies around and are not concentrated and actually end up lowering rates. We're exploring innovative ideas about mitigation. Now, we did a mitigation program in 2009 of $30 million. Our uh, state around the wind boom is kind of fighting us. Every state around us, our sister states, have done mitigation. That just simply means that you build a stronger house and you build it out of arms where you don't put it at sea level. You've got to build it up so it doesn't flood when you have a surge or a hurricane on the Gulf Coast. You put it out of harm's way if you're in Mississippi. You've got to do that and you've got to do it correctly. We are looking at the mitigation programs that you've got to do to build a stronger home and it's going to take some dollars to do that. Not out of the general fund of the state of Mississippi. We've got funds available through the wind boom to do some of these projects. Our sister states have all done it and what's happened, rates have dropped. You've got stronger homes. You've got a better economy on the Gulf Coast and Alabama. And Louisiana's got to do it because of the cat catastrophic events they have suffered. Mississippi had over 120 tornadoes last year. Uh, Scientific American has a great article, if you're into that type of literature, about tornadoes in the southeast and what's happening with weather changes and climate changes. The Mississippi's tornadoes are not as bad as those that used to happen in the Midwest, or like Oklahoma and Kansas, but we still have more tornadoes than any other state in the Union. We're addressing those issues with mitigation the same way we've got to address support for industry. We've got to go in and have the availability of insurance to cover those chicken houses and poultry industry products that are produced in this state, or you will not have jobs in the state and you will not have, I say again, tongue and cheek, Chick fil A chicken or Kentucky fried. Now, I haven't talked a lot about health care today, but I want to mention health care. After nine months of being out of network last year with the University Medical Center and Blue Cross Blue Shield, we got the got that genie back into the box. We brought out and uncovered a lot of the issues that we have problems with within the state of Mississippi. And we're having to rewrite some of our regulations, which we are doing, and we'll publish them very shortly, uh, to address access and networks. How can you buy a brand new car and not drive it and park it in a garage? You wouldn't do that. How can I allow insurance to be sold in the Delta if you don't have a place to use it? Think about what I'm saying to you. How can you have economic development within the Delta if you have no access to health care? What do you do when a third of your hospitals in this state are closing and they depend upon three or four sources of income? Medicare, Medicaid, self-pay, and insurance. Folks, it's a big deal. We've authorized a study through our high risk pool, which will be done in conjunction with the Delta Council to look at the access to health care throughout the state of Mississippi. It's not a legislative study. I'm going to make that clear. It's not funded by the government. It's funded by high-risk dollars that have been out there, and we can afford to do this. I can't tell you when we will complete the study. We hope to have it completed sometime between January and February of this next year. I don't think that will happen. But I want you to know that we are addressing the health care part that we have to address through insurance in the state of Mississippi. Challenges will remain in the healthcare industry. They're going to remain in the property and casualty side. They remain for churches on the Gulf Coast that can't find commercial insurance to cover their churches. They're there. We're working to alleviate those problems. I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic about the future of our great state. My team and I are committed to serving you and building the Mississippi with economic opportunities for everyone, with strong health care, resilient communities for generations to come. It's an honor to serve you. I love my job, and I take it very seriously when I get up every morning and go to work. Whether it's on a Zoom call or in that office, I think it's an honor to serve the people of our great state of Mississippi. Thank you for allowing me to serve you. God bless you. God bless the United States of America.